Cruising in a jeep, there's this North Korean soldier who's had enough of Kim Jong-un's rules. He's pushing the pedal to cross the border real fast, knowing he might get hurt or worse. We'll get into why he's doing this later. But first, let's talk about why folks call North Korea the world's biggest prison and why getting out alive seems nearly impossible. Buckle up for the ride. If a North Korean tries to leave without permission, Kim Jong-un sees it as treason. The punishment for that can be life imprisonment or even death. Surprisingly, just moving from one province to another within North Korea without permission is considered a serious crime, also carrying the death penalty. Many organizations agree that North Korea has the worst human rights record in the world. In North Korea, every guy has to do at least 10 years of mandatory military service. Free speech doesn't exist, and the government controls all the media. It's the only place where you can get punished, just because your relatives messed up. Back in 2009, a two-year-old got a life sentence because someone found a Bible book near his dad. Practicing a religion is a crime there. Getting into North Korea as a foreigner is tough, and if they let you in, they keep a close eye on you, only letting you go where the government says. Break any local rules, like what happened to Otto Warmbier, an American who visited in 2015, and things can get seriously bad. He got arrested in 2016, accused of stealing, and got slapped with a 15-year prison sentence. After a year, he ended up in a coma in a North Korean prison camp and was sent back to the US, where he died without getting proper care for his brain injuries. All these events make it seem like North Korea is this huge prison where people are kind of like slaves, even if technically they're supposed to be free. That's why North Koreans try all sorts of ways to escape, even though it's super tough because of the strict geography. The Yellow Sea is on one side, and the Sea of Japan is on the other, with the North Korean Navy keeping a tight watch. Getting to South Korea is almost impossible, because the North Korean Navy is all over, and South Korea is seen as a major enemy. But for those who manage to escape, South Korea is the top choice. It's not because it's super fancy or free, but because South Korea treats all North Koreans like their own citizens and avoids the North Korean army. Crossing the border can totally change your life, but staying alive is a big question mark, given the heavy army presence there. Even a bird would think twice before crossing. There's this crazy 2017 video where a North Korean soldier sped his Jeep towards South Korea, left the vehicle, and ran for the border. North Korean soldiers fired at him, but he miraculously made it into South Korea even with multiple gunshot wounds. South Korean soldiers grabbed him, just like they do with many North Korean civilians trying to escape. Sadly, most of them get shot on the spot, and even those who make it to South Korea have a tough time surviving because of their gunshot wounds. Going straight for South Korea is like asking for trouble because the North Korean border is super guarded, with around 750,000 soldiers, barbed wire, and landmines. Another way folks try is crossing into China, with a bit leading to Russia. It might seem a bit easier, but it's still really tough. The military presence along this 1,300 kilometers border is less, but there are dangerous mountains and jungles all over the place. Even though there are ties with China, the border mainly runs along the Tumin and Lu rivers. If a defector reaches this China border, crossing the river is a big challenge, especially in winter when both rivers freeze. Defectors and smugglers used to wait for this chance, walking over the frozen rivers. This approach also worked in tough summers when the river levels dropped in China. However, getting to Russia didn't guarantee safety. North Korea had ties with both China and Russia, so if a North Korean defector made it to their land, they were handed back to North Korea. But it didn't stop there. Defectors had to run away from China and Russia and find another place. Options were kind of limited, with Myanmar and Laos to the south, Unfortunately, both countries often caught North Korean defectors and sent them back up north. So, the only real choices left were Thailand, Vietnam, and Mongolia, whose borders with China were seen as safer for defectors. South Korea treats all North Koreans like their own, so these three countries were better for defectors than going back north. Trying to send them back to Korea would get you in trouble with the defectors. The plan was for them to first go to China, Russia, Thailand, Vietnam, or Mongolia. After reaching these spots, the idea was for them to give themselves up to the authorities, who would then arrange for them to hop on a ship to South Korea. This journey was their shot 
at starting a whole new life. Since 1990, about 34,000 North Koreans have successfully escaped and made it to South Korea. Back then, North Korea had support from the Soviet Union. However, in 1991, that support stopped and North Korea went through a tough economic downturn. Things got even worse, leading to a lot of deaths, around 3.5 million people suffering from starvation and a lack of basic resources. As the years went by, more and more people tried to escape from North Korea. Even after the economic crisis, the number of defectors stayed high until 2012. But in 2012, everything changed when Kim Jong-un took over after his father passed away. The new leader beefed up security big time, using signal jammers, ramping up intelligence monitoring, putting up fences, and increasing military patrols along the borders. Russia and China teamed up with North Korea to tighten control, increasing surveillance along the entire border, making it tough for North Korean defectors to enter China. These changes led to a drop in the number of defectors each year, hitting a low of 1,000 in 2019. Things got even tougher in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. North Korea shut its borders completely to keep the virus out, and military patrols along the northern border were ordered to shoot on sight, making escape nearly impossible. The harsh conditions in North Korea, along with strict security measures, have essentially turned the country into a virtual prison. People can't practice any religion, and contact with the outside world is seriously restricted. Executions happen not only by hanging, but also by firing squads, showing just how much control the oppressive regime has over its citizens. Despite the world knowing about it, the Soviet Union's historical involvement in North Korea's nuclear program prevents significant international action. The hope is that awareness and public attention can eventually bring about a change in this dire situation. If you found the information intriguing, don't forget to like and share the video with others who might also appreciate these fascinating facts. Thank you for your kind and supportive comments. We truly appreciate your engagement. Stay tuned for our next captivating video, where we'll delve into more awesome and enlightening content. See you in the next video.